PMA, um, thermal mechanical analyzer, measures linear or volumetric changes in the dimension of a sample as a function of time, temperature, or force Same thing, you can use it for many different uh, R&D applications. Um, we have measures um, for the expansion probes. We have two different kinds of expansion probes. One is a flat tipped. Um, it's about a tenth of an inch uh, in diameter. It's used for uh, solid materials. And then we have a macro probe, which is about 0.25 inches. And that one can be used for soft or irregular shaped powders or frozen liquids. Uh, measures coefficient of thermal expansion and also for glass transition temperatures. The penetration probe. Um, um, measures softening points and coating and film evaluations. Heating rates, you want to keep them fairly slow to prevent um, thermal gradients. You want to keep them less than 5 degrees. A purge gas is usually nitrogen. I would say 99% nitrogen. And flow rate of 100 milliliters a minute. Works quite well. Expansion measurements. Um, you can get glass transition and delamination and decomposition. And coefficient of thermal expansion measures the change of length with the change in temperature. The best way to do it is over a wide area, say 20 degrees, 40 degrees. You don't want to keep it at a point. If you start with a point, um, your numbers are not very accurate. And another thing you've got to worry about with TMA is you have to have no um, uh, what do you call it, uh, stress relaxation happening inside of the sample. So if you do have some kind of a stress that's built into the sample, this is another one where you got to heat it up to just below the glass transition and let it come down and then do your sample testing. Um, the best uh, accuracy is like uh, samples that are about 5 millimeters thick. We have, do do it quite often with smaller samples, but for the greatest reproducibility, we would like 5. Here's some samples. This is the penetration probe. All these started out about the same, but with the temperature as it increased, you can see what happens to the different samples as the penetration probe. The penetration probe is, um, it's got a little nub that sits on the bottom that actually pokes down into the sample. That's what's different from that. The other ones for coefficient of thermal expansion are flat. But the one with the penetration probe has kind of a little nub, more of a little point that pokes down into Here's an expansion probe. Um, you can see that everything was pretty much the same until we got here and one expanded greater than the other two did. Here's uh, what I meant by um, to do it over a slope. This is over a range. You can get this nice flat lines here. The glass transition would be right in between here, where these two lines would intersect with the glass transition. So right about here is where 100 degrees or so would be where the glass transition is. And once you get above the glass transition, then it increases faster. And this is a sample that was run from a minus 50 degrees to 225. And you can see it was absolutely the same slope all the way around. I have a question about DSC. Okay. Uh, you you have a lot of thermal events. You know, there's a glass transition. There's a crystallization possibility, which is exothermic. There's a melting, which is endothermic. There could be reactions. Um, uh, nobody labels those for you as they're running. You have to figure out what's going on. Right. And uh, uh, so, what what are some of the tricks that you use? I mean, if you don't, if you really truly really have an unknown sample. So you don't know that you've got polypropylene, or you don't know that you have PET or whatever. What are some of the tricks that you use to help divine out what's going on in each of those, those um, peaks? Heat, cool, and reheat is very good. Um, if you heat, cool, and reheat, if it is a um, reversible event, it will be there all the time. If it is stress, sometimes you can actually see in the glass transition, instead of being a nice glass transition where it comes down with a nice slope, it'll jump and it'll almost look like a melt instead of a glass transition. So if you heat, cool, and reheat it, the glass transition should look normal. Um, that is probably the best bet. And then to look at common
come and reference uh, materials and see where they're melting and compare it to your sample and kind of get an idea of what, what you got there. What and about solvent evaporation? What do, you, do you ever check to see if there's some solvent in the sample? Because sometimes you'll see that boil off and it'll give you a... We haven't had too much of that kind of problem. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a good problem. You could run it on the TGA first to make sure mm -hmm. that um, whatever it is is coming off. And then you could actually... Um, we have other methods of good stall where you can check that uh, material coming off and figure out what that gas is, if there is something there. So we have met many measures to get around something. 